Everybody, welcome back to another very exciting episode here at Adobe Live. I'm back with cinematic photo editing with Idara Ekpa. Hey, Idara, how's it going? Good. How are you? Fantastic. I'm so glad that we're back for day Yay. number two. We had a fantastic day yesterday. You showed us a lot of awesome techniques in editing your photos, and it was it was just a great day. We had a lot of great questions from the chat, and I'm hoping that we get to have, we get to have a lot of that same interaction today. Yes, I'm really hoping everybody was so active yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So make sure that you leave your questions in the chat. We'll be happy to answer them. Um, I see already familiar faces in the chat. General Kenobi is in the chat. Sam Peterson, who was just doing a, an Adobe Photoshop uh, daily creative challenge. So you can check those out at 9 a.m. Pacific. Um, Sam Peterson is, has been on every day for, I believe, the last week or so. Oh, wow. But make sure that you check him out. And he's going to be showing a lot of cool Photoshop tips and tricks. But yeah, let us know where you're watching from. I'm streaming from the beautiful San Francisco Bay Area in San Ramon, California. Where are you, Idara? I am in sunny Phoenix, Arizona. Sunny it's Phoenix, Arizona. Cold right now, but you know. <laughs> we, we were talking about that yesterday, how you, you and me were both not snow people. So let us know in the chat not if you're a snow person. So um, let us know what you're gonna, we're going to talk about today. Idara, what's going on today? So today we're going to continue talking about um, how to create cinematic photos. I do want to also talk a little bit about how I kind of composition a lot of my shots as well and how I think that adds to kind of making an image cinematic as well. So we'll go through a few, we'll kind of, we'll pick up where we left off yesterday and then um, continue into showing some other examples as well. Sounds great. Um, we can, we can get started if, uh, if you're ready. Awesome, perfect. And so um, just real quickly for anyone who doesn't see my work, um, photographer here in Phoenix, Arizona, I have been shooting for, if my mouse wants to work. Oh, it doesn't want to scroll today. No problem. Uh -oh. <laughs> there we go. It was, it was, it was lagging. Um, but I am a photographer here in Arizona. Um, a lot of my work is just based off of just really creating dreamlike and cinematic photos. I really, mm -hmm. like I mentioned yesterday, I'm really big on movies and I want my images to look really lifelike um, and just dramatic and editing at times as well. And so we'll go through a couple of the different examples of my work. We did do quite a bit yesterday. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my screen to show y'all again, in case you missed it. We took this image with my friends, Jamil, uh, where, you know, I talked a little bit about how um, in some of my shoots, I do kind of focus on what ways I can bring color relationships um, into my art. Cause I feel that when you know the colors work well together, then that kind of makes things look more cohesive and they pop out a little bit more and also help to make things look a little bit more cinematic. So um, knowing that red and blue are, um, they are, they work well together then I was able to kind of focus on, all right, what color of the bowl do I, do I want it to stay blue like this? Do I want it more teal? I wanted her red dress to pop out more. And this was the final image that we want, we got. So it was more of that dreamlike hazy effect um, in the photo. You can see her red dress popped out a bit more. I'm gonna see if I can do the little side-by-side -side thing too. So you can see that the red dress is a little bit more vibrant. The car, I talked about how much I love the color teal. <laughs> um, Money maker. It's the money maker. Um, and so that was the first photo we went through. And then secondly, we went through this shot as well. Um, and just kind of again, how to figure out how we can make things a little bit more dramatic, more cinematic and make things pop. And so a lot of my shots, um, especially the ones where I'm shooting with people of darker complexions, um, I really love the, the way that dark skin looks against the color blue. So I always try to incorporate skies if I can. Um, and so this was another photo that we edited yesterday as well. So we, and we were also in the process of editing this shot. So we'll kind of pick up where we left off 
This was a shot from my series called Brother, which again was focused on kind of um, humanizing Black men and showing the power behind brotherhood. And so I had some of my friends come out. I took some portraits of them, had them come out in all Black because it made them look sleek and fly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so in this shot, I really love the way I, it was kind of um, composed. I like how he's taking up like mainly like the like kind of leading into the photo as well. I don't like that. I like that he's not dead in the center. Um, I like that you have all of this green around him. I also think that um, our complexions do really well around green too. Um, I know I want to change the goal is I want to change this this color of the green and make it a little bit more cinematic, um, cinematic and make it pop. So we did do a bit of editing yesterday. I think I took off no, this is where we left off yesterday. So this is the before and after of the image, just to give you guys a quick summary of what we did in Lightroom, because we are we left off in Photoshop yesterday. Um, I always start off with my color, my changing the camera profile. I just think that's a great way to really get a nice basic start to your image and kind of get an mm -hmm. idea of where you want to go with your editing. Um, so if you want something um, black, um, monochromatic, you can go ahead and change that and then work on just fixing you know the tones to look better as a black and white image. There's Adobe Color, this Portrait, um, Standard, Neutral, Faithful. My usual favorites are either Standard, Faithful. In this case, Faithful makes his skin a little bit red, which I didn't want, or Neutral, which I really liked because it kept his skin kind of similar to where the undertones in both of the, in the before and the after. So this is probably where I always start off. I just think it's a great place to like, if you don't know what you want to do with your image, you can kind of start here, pick a, can a camera profile and um, really start to see, okay, where do I want to go with this image? Um, then we spent some time in our basics, just kind of focusing on exposure, make sure it's contrasted. And I spent, um, I kind of started to do a little bit in the color grading, but focusing again on, uh, we're going to, we were planning on targeting more so this green in Photoshop. So I'll pull up where we left off so we can see what we have so far. And if you missed yesterday's stream, you can always check out the recording on yes. behance.net slash live. You definitely can. Um, perfect. So with this shot, um, the first thing that I did was um, I, I talked a little bit about frequency separation being a technique that can be used for skin editing. Um, I, in the case of this shot, the, he has pretty fine skin. There's nothing that I felt like I needed to go in and like change. Again, if there's like a pimple or something massive, I'll always go out and take that out. But I try to keep, um, one of the goals that I have now is trying to keep skin look as looking as natural as it can look. Um, so that the subject's able to recognize themselves and it looks realistic, um, and doesn't look like a fantasy as well. Um, and so I didn't do much there. I did do some dodging and burning just to bring out some of his facial features uh, a little bit more. Um, when we talked about dodging and burning again, I like to relate it to when I'm getting my makeup done. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I just think it's the easiest way that it works in my brain, but you are dodging the areas that you want to bring out. So similar to when you use concealer underneath like a shade that might be a shade or so um, lighter than your skin tone, you put that underneath your eyes, the bridge of your nose, your forehead, chin. Um, so as far as portraits go, when I'm usually focusing on face, that's where I'm dodging. Um, and then anywhere that I see that the light is naturally hitting, that gives me a bit of, that gives me a bit of like a highlight. So over here on his hand, I could dodge a bit, um, just to make those areas pop out a little bit more. And so again, where the light naturally hits on her face is where I would go and add a little bit more dodging. And then if I want it to burn, I would do that around the perimeters of the face or, um, sometimes if I want it to like change or kind of dodge his shirt or even um, if I wanted to burn certain areas of his shirt or even dodge it to make the pattern of it pop out a little bit more, I could do that as well. So you can see that that just kind of was subtle, but it brings about his facial features a little bit more and adds more dimension to his face. Then we moved into my favorite part, which is the color grading. <laughs> and so we spent some time um, talking about different ways that I like to do my color grading, always starting off in selective color. So we'll continue that today um, so we can look at that. But this is where we've left off thus far. And I'm actually really in love with what this looks like thus far. I don't even know how much more I want to do, if I'm being honest. I didn't even think, I just think that changing We didn't add the sparkles on him. <laughs> no, we're not at it. <laughs> I don't know if he, would, if he would want sparkles this time. Um, but... 
So what I do want to do is I kind of really like, um, so his glasses, if you guys can see in his glasses, his eyes are peeking through a little bit as well mm. as you can see me here, my body here with the camera. I'll zoom in a little bit so y'all can see what I'm talking about in case you can't do to do, do if this will let me zoom in. There we go. So you can see, you know, there's my arm right there. Mm -hmm. You can see his eye popping through. So I want to kind of see if I can make his glasses darker. So let me see what the best way to do that is. Actually, I'm just going to use a brush. And it might not be the right way, the maybe is a better way, but this is what we're gonna do. <laughs> so I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna put it at 100 and I'm just gonna use my brush tool. I'm gonna go in and start to paint. So I'm gonna paint this area. because I really want these glasses to look like really crisp and clean and black. And then if I wanted to, I can press my backs Nope, I can't do that. Well, hold on. Let's see. Okay, so that one, I might go and do some cleanup because I think there's some spillover. Do, do, do. It's a really messy, but just to go in and darken that up a bit. Grab my eraser, make this a little smaller. Make sure that we didn't get much spillover. See, there we go. We got some there on the glasses. So this is a moment where maybe a tablet would have been, or using a, yeah, a tablet would have been a little bit better. I was, <laughs> I was getting nervous. We were talking about that yesterday. <laughs> I get a little nervous when using my mouse to edit. All right. Let's see what that looks like when I zoom out. Yeah, I just like how like, boom, that is. And if I felt like it was too much, I could also reduce the opacity a bit and I think the fill I'm going to keep at 100%, but then reduce that opacity. So I like the way that looks. I also noticed that he has a lot of gold jewelry and I kind of want to see what I can do to make that pop a little bit more as well. So I'm going to go back into selective color. and We'll start with the yellows and see, and I'm going to zoom in so I can see how it is changing if it is at all. So need to not pay attention to the background see what kind what do i want this ring oh yeah that's nice yeah that pops out more sam says team, uh, hashtag team tablet i'm guessing sam is a <laughs> tablet man let us know in the chat if you're a tablet yes. person or not as, as we were discussing know. yesterday uh i think you and i are kind of the same boat where we feel more comfortable with the mounts mm -hmm. but over the last few years i've gotten pretty good with the with the tablet but instinctively i always reach for the mouse exactly um i wish i could be i just i i like i mentioned yesterday i'd like to use my ipad because at least i can see what i'm editing mm -hmm. i have not mastered the tablet yet and so one day I hope to, because I do think it's easier to use more of a pen to, to, to edit. And it's better. It feels better in my hand than a um, mouse. Sometimes I get little hand cramps <laughs> when I'm editing. Um, okay. So I like this adjustment here. So you guys can see, um, obviously it impacted the whole background. I don't want this color um, on his back on the background. And it also impacted his skin too, but you can see, if you look at like the ring, you can see it's more kind of a reddish gold type of color. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do command I and invert the layer. And then I can grab my, um, I think the eraser tool, right? No. Nope. Yes. Okay. I can use the eraser tool on the color black and I can zoom in and paint in where I want to see that adjustment layer. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and paint this in here. That way I can see it on the ring. Beautiful. And then we come and also do his necklace as well. And I can be messy with that because I'm not touching the skin at all or the the color adjustment didn't impact the mm -hmm. shirt. So we're good there. 
I know it might be difficult to see, but when you do the before and after, it's going to be clear as mm -hmm. day. It'll be clear as day. And I'm actually going to come up to his glasses and see if we can, what we can do here. Maybe I'll keep this the same, but let's see. Okay, so I'm going to come in and paint. I want to be careful because I don't want to like go like this and like hit his skin. Mm -hmm. Um, so again, this is where a tablet would have been handy, but hey, we work okay. with what we got. <laughs> Why not? Why not? So this part can be a little tedious, um, but again, I just really love how you can really just have so much control. Mm -hmm. I'm like if I don't like the color of something, I'm like, oh, I can change that later. We'll change it in post. Yep, change it in post. <laughs> Let's see. So oh, I'm getting a little messy there, but that's okay. Today we don't. We're not going to worry about perfection. <laughs> you guys get the idea. <laughs> so come up, and then another thing I will show y'all with these this this photo set. I have one more image from this set. I know we talked a little bit about how do you keep your images mm -hmm. consistent. Um, so we can, I can show you guys a quick example of that. We might not go through that full image of editing, but I'll show you what I do to um, make sure that it's consistent. Yeah, I think that question was asked by uh, Dopegasm who's in the chat right now. Yes. So there we go. You're gonna get a, a further explanation to that question you had yesterday. Yes, because especially when you're doing photo sets, you really wanna make sure that you're keeping your images as consistent as they can be. You don't want each, in, each photo telling a different story. <laughs> you mm -hmm. wanted to be able to work together as a collective. By the way, um, Sam posted Idara's website and Instagram in the chat. So make sure that you click on those and check out her work. My guy, Sam. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, perfect. I think that is, yeah. So when I zoom out, let's see how much you can, it'd be sad if I did all that and you can't really <laughs> tell much of a difference. <laughs> okay, you can see it. So if you look you at his it. ring, you can see it in this ring. Yeah. You see and then, you know, if, if you really wanted to, the mask is there so you can go crazy now. Exactly. Um, so if I really wanted, like, exactly. So if I wanted to go and like play with this more, I could, um, which is really nice, but I'm really happy with, that color there. Mm -hmm. So let's see, is there anything else I want to do with this image? I don't think so. I think we're okay, but you can see that before and after there, I'm going to go ahead and save it. And that way it'll send itself back into Lightroom and I will show y'all that before and after of this image. Our good friend Sean, uh, Sean just joined in the chat. He says, hello, Freddie and Adara. Um, so my family calls me Freddie. I mentioned that it's it, it, I mean, <laughs> team. So now some people call me Freddie. <laughs> Beautiful. And there we go. So. Oh, I, I just noticed that. Uh, I'm sorry. I Sorry about that. Sorry for interrupting. What were you going to say? What happened? No, I'm, I'm sorry. What were you going to oh, say? Oh, yeah, no. completely interrupted I, you. No, you are perfectly fine. <laughs> You're perfectly fine. I was just sending it back into Photoshop or sorry, into Lightroom so we can see that before and after of this image. Bam. So yeah. you'll see there we did the um, kind of focused on keeping his skin tone relatively similar throughout the both images. Mm -hmm. um, obviously changing the background of the green. It just looks a lot more cinematic and more like I don't know like it's just straight out of a film like mm -hmm. I, I one of the things I really want to do um, I tapped into a little bit in the past year and a half or so now is experimenting with film too and color grading and with video and so mm -hmm. I, I think that I'm really kind of intrigued by colors in motion and so I really want to start to do that more and see how I can apply what I do in photos in that realm as well right um, but y'all can see the before and after. Tell me what you think about it. I love this image. Um, I love the colors of it and just love how, again, this shade of green, I tend to go towards that yellowish, orangey kind of color um, than just, you know, regular boring green grass. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I want to keep the green. It just kind of depends on what I'm going for. 
So in this case, these, these are two images from the same set. Um, so you'll see that there is a difference, obviously, with like the angle. This was shot at a, you know, I had him sitting down. I think he was like sitting or crouched down, whereas he's standing up here. And so that the lighting situation in both of these images are relatively the same, but you can see that there's more white space and it's just a mm -hmm. different, there's just a bit of differences there. So the first thing that I'm going to do when I want to keep images consistent in a set is I will command C. And so you'll see all of these different adjustments that I've made. And I just kind of want to copy them and paste them on this image here, which is again, why I really love working in Lightroom because you can just, you have that was just so easy to just be like, bam, from one image to the next. Mm -hmm. um, so all of those adjustments that we made on that previous image are now over here. Um, I think the image is a bit too bright again. Like I really want this set to be a little bit, a bit darker, moody. So I'm gonna reduce my exposure a bit, but also bring back my shadows a tad bit as well and just see what I can do there. Sean is asking a question in the chat, Idara. Yes. He's asking, uh, does Idara have any tips for editing portraits of subjects with darker skin tones? Oh, yes. Um, I talked about that a little bit yesterday. I think the biggest thing is, I feel like, is to understand that there is not really a one size fits all uh, with editing. And so something that might work with one complexion or skin tone isn't may not work with another. And so I think it's really important to be mindful of when you're editing, um, you know, you don't want someone to look different from what they naturally look like. And so what I oftentimes do when I'm editing, I always refer back to the original photo just to see, okay, you know, am I, am I too far off? Did I make this person make look too orange and, or, and yellowy and then not look, and it's just, it doesn't look good. So you want to be referring back to the original image as often as you can. And then when you're dealing with skin colors, um, I always go into another cool thing is um, when you're editing, there is obviously there's reds, oranges, and yellows in the skin. And so I tend to work with those three colors, whether it's in my HSL sliders or when I'm in Photoshop, I'm using it usually in selective color and I'm focusing on the reds and yellow sliders. Mm -hmm. um, and you, when you're focusing on that, it's just kind of finding the correct balance for that skin tone. Um, so those are the two areas that I focus on. Like if you feel like someone's not looking the right complexion or color, you can really go to those that um, sliders and then be able to see, okay, what adjustments can I make to make everything look more um, cohesive and natural? Um, so I would kind of just play around with things. If it's too, if they're too orange, you know, maybe you need to reduce the saturation and maybe the hue of the skin is like, you know, if I had it looking like this and I'm like, oh, like the red, like his lips look really like weird now you know you want to make sure that everything looks but i don't want to have the red high the the red slider all the way up because now he's looking dull and orangey so you want to be able to make sure that it's balanced or figuring out what might work the best um but i usually like to do my skin editing in photoshop because i feel like you can then target like if i'm looking at the reds i can focus on the cyans the yellows the magentas and figure out okay what balance do i need to create um, to really get the skin looking the best that it can look. So awesome. um, great, great tips. That was, yes, that was a long winded answer. I felt like I was going <laughs> out of breath there. <laughs> did you take a drink of water now? After yes, that answer? <laughs> I do. I do. Um, perfect. So we are sending this image over into Photoshop. If it wants to, let's see if it even wants to go. Okay. All right, let's see, there we go. And what I'm also gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and open up the previous file that we just had to, to see what I can do here. Um, so if you guys can see here, I have, this was the color green that I did. Obviously a lot of this was very specific to this image and the placement. So the placement of where he's sitting here opposed to where he's standing. If I copied and pasted the edits over, um, it's not, I'm gonna have to go back and kind of like erase and repaint the mask to make sure it's hitting where I want it to hit. So I could do it that way. Or if the longer way is if I had a notepad and I want it to go in and see, okay, you know, I think this was the reds. What was this? Hold on, let's, let's see, what was? Oh, this is the greens. <laughs> So what was this? I'm not seeing any differences. 
Perfect. There you go. If I wanted to make note of the of the adjustments that I made, I could just, you know, maybe write down these numbers and then go into the next image. Um, I'm going to actually just, let's see. So I'm just going to copy this over because I don't have a notepad with me. <laughs> so we're going to duplicate the group and send it over to the other image. Now that looks scary, obviously. Like you can see everything is all over the place. So I'm going to um, turn off these adjustment layers. I actually don't need this one right now with the glasses. I'm not going to go through that all over again. So this was for the grass. I'm going to go ahead and press, let's see. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm laughing uh, because Sean in the chat is saying, I couldn't talk Adara into adding the banana tool and smile or laugh emoji. <laughs> You know, it's funny. So um, I was hosting um, Adobe Live. What was it like? It was maybe two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And Sean was kept talking about this dang banana tool. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what the banana tool is. And then uh, we found out the next, the second day of the stream. And, and so it was funny because it was... Um, with a, um, a photographer who does a lot of food editing mm. um, and food animation. And so um, Sean kept talking about the banana because he was editing bananas in his image. So <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit funny. It was a bit funny. Um, yeah, so I, this I showed is... him how to add the banana tool, God knows when, and, and, <laughs> and Sean has been <laughs> talking about it ever since. And he, he said in the chat, yeah, that was me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like, I remember you, Sean. He had all the jokes. He had all the banana jokes that week. <laughs> um, so this adjustment layer is fine because this was just targeting. There's not, uh, the greens are only in the grass. So this mm -hmm. was fine there. I think this was focused on the, I made the green, the grass more yellow. So you guys can see it's spilling over an image. So if I see here, let's see, let me, Go to my eraser too. I just kind of press the. Oh, na, 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 na. Okay, so I'll make this bigger and then see. Okay, so I don't want it to impact anything here. And the other thing I really wanted to talk about today as well, like when it comes to cinematic photos, for me, I think that where I found a lot of strength in my images and making them a lot more powerful is also in the um the way i composite my images um and how i whether it's like the composition or um the posing um as well as my photos i think that when you can add like some kind of like layering with your image with your posing especially if you're shooting with multiple people um i think it just adds a lot more in the story that you're telling in your image so once i finish this masking we can talk a little bit about what, what my hope what I was trying to accomplish with this image and why I had them posed the way that I did. And I tend to do a lot of this staggering and a lot of, and some of my photos, another image that I have for today, I did the same, same kind of um, staggering with my subjects. Well, I mean, talking about staggering, that kind of looks like a movie poster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this was, I remember this being my favorite one from the set, I think when I shared the set, I think this was even the one, we had like a small like uh, video that went with and I think this was the photo I used as the cover and, and try to make it like a movie poster, but you know, I did my best. <laughs> I think it just included me putting the name of the project on it, but perfect, there we go. Um, but yeah, so I had, I, I with this set, it was really important to focus on again, brotherhood and, um, men just showing up for another, each one of one another and supporting each other. So I really liked um, kind of like them stacked up against each other. Cause you know, like, it's almost like I have this person's back. And so mm -hmm. I really liked that aspect of it. I tend to like, you know, when my subjects are kind of more towards the left side of the frame. And so, and then leaving this, this, this negative space open here. Um, so I really like how I did that there. Um, and I just feel like it added more, I don't know, it just made the photo look a little bit more interesting. So I have some spillover here with this screen. Let me zoom in here. We're 
Still banana to uh, comments in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to um get your, get the banana tool on your on your how do, up how do you do that? Do you see the three dot icon on the left hand side above the four? Yep, click yes. on that. Okay. Go to edit toolbar, hold okay. the shift key and click on done. Shift key and hit click on done. And then like oh, so what does it do? Does it nothing. do anything? It's <laughs> fun. <laughs> how did you guys find out about the banana tool? Is my question. Like. That's One of the uh, uh, Photoshop engineers told me about it, and I oh. showed it on a on a <laughs> Adobe Live a while back. <laughs> now I have the banana tool. And and if I you can... ever want to take it away, do the same thing, but hold the Option key. So I can I click on this, and yeah, then hold, hold the Option key and click and done. Click on done, yeah, and then ah it. okay. Or shift to add it, Option to get rid of it. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Yeah, last week I was like, it was so, that week that I, we had the live, I felt like I wasn't hip to the game. Like yeah. <laughs> everyone kept talking about the banana tool and I was like, <laughs> Like what? <laughs> <laughs> Shows how much I know, but there we go. Now I yeah. feel, I get the joke now. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're part of the in crowd. <laughs> you're one of the cool kids now. I'm one of the cool kids now. So Everybody's like. You know, if you guys are like, you know, who knows if people are going back to school or offices yet. But if you are, make sure that you go into your buddy's desk and, you know, out of an Anatole without them knowing yep. and it'll freak them out. <laughs> so it's so like random. I wonder why they picked a banana. My guess is that they don't feed the Adobe engineers down at. Oh, I'm there you go. Day. <laughs> <laughs> They're just hungry. <laughs> Perfect. So. Yeah, the, the other Easter eggs, I think it's a coffee cup and toast. So everything is food related. So they must be hungry. Oh, wow. Yeah, they must be. Someone needs to feed them then. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to. I don't want this. Like, I don't know what this was doing. I can't remember. Actually, I'm not going to delete. I'm just going to leave it. Um, the one thing I do want to do is I kind of want to see what what I can do with the color of his hat. So I'm going to go back to selective color. I'll bring this to the top. And if I was or a bit more organized, I would have labeled, you know, what colors I'm targeting because it make it'll make, it would have made it a bit more easier. But I don't feel like doing that today. So <laughs> we're not going to. So you guys can see as I'm moving these sliders again, it's impacting the color of his hat. <laughs> Do I want it like orange? Ooh. Let's see what that looks like before and after looks like. Cool. I like that. And if I want to change it, I can go back and change it. And even this, another thing I could have done too is, and maybe we'll do it this way. I could go I've gone into hue and saturation. That's another way I oftentimes make changes. And so. So I want it. So whether it's that way or this way, those are two different ways I could have changed the color of the hat. And then all I'm gonna do again is, you can see that before and after there, I'm gonna invert the layer. Did it invert? Command I, that's why. Uh-uh, wrong -uh. thing, okay, hold on. No, that's not what I want to do. What are you trying to do? I'm trying to, let's see. What do I want to do? So this is visible. I want it to invert it. There we go. And that way I can just come and paint it. I don't know if I was pressing the wrong button because mm -hmm. that mask was all over the place, but I can come in and Sure, this is on white or no, on black, excuse me. And then I can paint in the color of the hat and I can see. But again, this mask is where it's red is where I don't want it to impact. And That's obviously what's showing with the regular color is, is what mm -hmm. you're impacting. Yes. How long do your shoots usually take? 
Good question. Um, I usually shoot for maybe like an hour at most two. Mm -hmm. um, I don't shoot for too long. Um, and a lot of the times it's like, it's just more so like I'll go in with like a mood board or some ideas of what I want or just go off of vibes and how I'm feeling with my subjects. So mm -hmm. um, that's the fun of like creative projects. It's just like, I try not to have, obviously there's something I want to accomplish, but I try not to put too much stress around it. Um, and so this was a shoot that it was just like, oh, you guys show up to the park, wear this. We had some music playing. I had them dancing. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. I would, every now and then I'll be like, okay, stop and pose like this. But um, I think we were probably even there maybe like two hours, two and a half hours. And then uh, we were close to sunset. So by the time we finished, it was like pitch black. So we were fighting against time in the first place, but it was fun. But in general, I like to shoot for, um, if I'm shooting a project, they usually are like an hour and a half, hour to maybe two hours max. I don't like to shoot for too long because then my body starts aching. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so sometimes, unless we have to shoot that long, which a lot of times we don't, I think I'm pretty fine there. I like that color too. I'm coming in. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm gonna erase this too. And this is the selective color that's controlling what? Mm -hmm. The hat again. I just mm. I had created the two different layers because I was like trying to show two different ways you can change the color of the hat, and I mm -hmm. liked how the two layers looked together. So got it. I'm just doing the same thing and erasing this mask here. So this is where like music comes into, like comes really handy, yeah. <laughs> especially when it's like super tedious like this. People in the chat are talking about all the Photoshop Easter eggs. There's toast, coffee, banana, monkey face. Really? Yeah, those are all the ones I know. And there's one for uh, Photoshop on the iPad, but you need a keyboard for it. If you uh, an iPad with a keyboard. Yeah, the monkey face one is is really weird. Um, it, it's like <laughs> to me, this is the well. First of all, I think it's I forget what you have to do. You have to go into like the layer comps and then type in like monkey or something, and then monkey comes up. <laughs> something mm -hmm. like that. You can look it up online if you're interested. Does it, does it go? So is it still? Is it here? Or is it? it do each no, of the other ones are in in the preferences panel, the copy Ooh. and toast, and the monkey faces in the layer comps panel. Oh wow! What I want. That's interesting. That's so like, again, so random. <laughs> what would you add to Photoshop as an Easter egg? Let us on the chat. <laughs> you to Adara, what would you add? What would I add? Ah. Uh, I, I don't know. What would you add? That's a the question right back to you. <laughs> All right. What will I add? Um, definitely something that shows up everywhere. Kind of like the banana tool, you know, like it can, it's always there. So people always see mm -hmm. it. So something like that. I don't know. Maybe like, um, maybe like a, like a decked out or blinged out layers panel, you know, with like mm -hmm. little, little designs or something on it. Oh, that'd be nice. So, so I think I'm kind of, so again, you can see like just keeping the background consistent mm -hmm. um, in both of these images, obviously the red of the hat kind of adds a different element in there, but I just, again, really just like how you can pick um, different colors or target certain colors. And so you guys can see here with the hat that these were the adjustments that I made to get it more of that like orangey red kind of color. And a lot of times when it comes to like me figuring out the colors that I want, um, I just kind of play by my eye and see, okay, mm -hmm. what do I like? And the great thing with masks too, like if I didn't like the color of that hat and I wanted to change it, I already created that mask. So I can come in and like, maybe I wanted it to be like, I don't know, green. <laughs> oh, I could go in and I can change that. I would have to clean this all up now, but you can have like full control over that and you can make it really saturated or not. 
Um, so I think that's a really cool tool to really change up the colors in your image. I'll bring the saturation down. Yeah, I think I'm good here and I kind of want to see what other images we can edit today as well. I'm going to save this so we can see the before and after as well. This we are done with. This is one of my favorite photos. Oh, I think I even have a print of it <laughs> <laughs> sitting somewhere in my in my house. Do you usually print your photos? Um, I'm not as often as I would like. Um, I want to start selling prints. That's a goal that I've had for a while. It was just finding the right print company to go with um, mm -hmm. that um, would print everything, you know, in the way that I would want. But um, I don't do a lot of printing, but I've started to do so in the past, maybe a couple of months now. I just think that like having some of your images in a tangible place is really, really cool. Um, and so I'm trying to print more and like, even like framing, having picture frames in my office space, you know, of some of my favorite sets. I think this set that I have here, let's see, is probably one of my favorite photo sets. So I'm, this is an image that I'm actually just printing. I'm waiting for it to come in that I'll put in like my living room. Like it's just so, mm, looks great. It's so, it's so artsy. So <laughs> It's the beautiful wall art that I've created, which I think is cool to be able yeah. to. Oh, I made that. Super cool indeed. And so now that's the before and after of that image that we just looked to add. Nice. As well. Yep, yep, yep. I'm going to actually go ahead and export that because a lot of these images, I really like the edits that I have now because mm -hmm. <laughs> they're always, they're a little bit different than when I first edited um, these photos or, um, originally before. Mm -hmm. um, but I just really, I love to always go back and revisit some of my work because you can go back and like see how much you've grown and see how much you have, like, I don't know, what's changed about your editing style over time. So sometimes I like things that are moody like this, and sometimes I like things that are really airy and light like this. Um, and so it's just nice to kind of play around and see what style you navigate towards. So let's see, what image do y'all want to edit next? So I have this photo set here. These are two of the same. All right, we'll call that one, this one we'll call image one. Yes, image one. Uh-huh. Image or two. Image two or image three. All right, let us know in the chat. Image one, two, or three, and can you show them to us again? Yes. So one, one two, two, or three for Ooh, our next image. They're all very different. One, two, yes. or three. Let us know. We'll give them a couple moments too. Yes, we'll give them well, a moment. So where were these photos shot? Can you give us a little background on them? Yes, yes. So they're all, all these photos are shot here in Arizona. Um, I always just kind of walk around and see, or whether I'm walking around or I'm just driving around, I'll find random locations. So this was like at a, um, this was actually shot in the same area that this image photo was shot at, that set was shot at. So it was just on the other side of the park. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, again, I love skies. And so I really loved how the sky was looking at this time. So I think this was probably like going to be like the main part of the image is saying, okay, what can I do with the color of the sky here? Um, this shot was actually, I think I shot it in a um, um, racket courts. I was like, mm. what, it, what are they called? So like, yeah, racket courts are really cool because then they're just like square. You can, they're really secluded um, as long as no one's playing a <laughs> racquetball on them. Um, and so I shot these on some racket courts. Um, this is from a project I called an Ode to Black Woman. Um, just talking about really just creating space for Black women to be light and soft and to be vulnerable. Um, and again, that, that concept of supporting one another as well. And so you'll see in this image compared to this one, I did the same kind of staggering mm -hmm. um, right. just to show again, leaning on each other, supporting one another. And I really loved how I don't know whenever I do that as well, I really love to focus on my, like have my subject and the main subject in focus and then it kind of blur out as well throughout. So I think that kind of makes it look more cinematic as well when you kind of have more of that depth of field in your image. 
And then I um, really love to introduce fabrics into my shots too. They're just so flowy. They add so much like texture to the shot as well. And so this was like um, one piece of fabric. I think it was, I can't remember the type of fabric it was, but there was one piece of fabric going here and then the other one that was like wrapping around mm -hmm. um, the, one, it, yeah. the girls in the shot. So I just really like the texture that it adds. Um, I love kind of adding fabrics or things around my lens to see, okay, what will that do or how will that frame the shot differently too. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I chose the color blue. I always, I'm telling y'all, I love the color blue, but it's just um, with the concept of black women being soft, so blue is a very calming color. It's a very relaxing color. Um, and mm. so sometimes I think that when you're focusing on colors in general, um, I love to really research, you know, colors work together, obviously, but the colors also bring forth certain emotions. So, you know, when you understand, okay, like the color red is, can mean love and passion, but it can also mean, you know, hatred <laughs> or fire. So mm -hmm. um, how can you use color in your, in your art to really help tell your story? Mm -hmm. And maybe people won't notice those little details, but it's stuff like that that makes, I feel like impacts the overall feeling of an image. Right. Um, so those are kind of the things I focus on. So whatever y'all pick next, you know, hopefully right. we have time so, to go through more of them, but whatever y'all pick for so next. <laughs> three, one, but there is a question with image number two, which is the the women you had there. Mm -hmm. So the question for, for this particular photo was, how would you crop this image as a portrait? Ooh, that is a good question. So like portraits, like if I were to... Like, I, I, I'm guessing the question means maybe the, the person in the front is like the main person, I would assume. I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. answer it however you think, whatever you think the question yeah, means. Yeah, I didn't I didn't know if they meant like, por like literally like a portrait like this, like how yeah, would I crop it, crop yeah. it this way? I probably wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I, um, because that's of what the I awkwardness of the, of the hand. Um, I, I actually wouldn't even crop this image much more. Um, right. I right. like, I like my subject. Like I do, I don't want, I probably would crop it. Cause I, I mean, I don't want this little space up here is a little awkward to me. Mm -hmm. So I could crop it in a bit more, but, um, not too close where it's too close to her head, but still her being like the main of the focus of the portrait. And then it's mm -hmm. leading out. Right. All right. Well, awesome. thank, thanks Did you for say, that. Yeah. You said 3-1? Three, 3 is what we have, 3-1. Oh, wow, 3 is our winner. <laughs> <laughs> they like the dramatic lighting. Yes, um, which I'm really excited. I wanted to introduce this photo into the set because I'm really proud of the lighting in this photo as well. And um, again, these a lot of my shots are shot with natural light. Um, mm -hmm. I don't come in. Um, I want to start to have like lights on hand that I can bring to shoots, but I'm too... Like, I don't have the energy for all that. <laughs> so I tend to work with what I have. Um, and so this was shot, I can't remember what time we shot this at, but I remember there was a lot, like, I think it was maybe getting close to sunset. And so it was like that golden hour for one. And then um, I really liked how the sun was hitting different spots of this location. And so I think this mm -hmm. is like a hotel and we we're just walking around on the outside of the hotel looking for um, spots to shoot at. And I really liked how when I placed uh, my subject here, you can see how it kind of like spotlights him and then the, it's darker all around. So like behind him is dark, up here is a little darker, but you see the light that's coming in and filling up the photo from the right side and the center as well. So I'm excited that you guys picked this photo because I was really proud of the lighting in this shot as well. Is this the same hotel where you found the car that we did yesterday? No, completely okay. different hotel. Um, so this hotel was, um, I don't even remember the name of it, but I'm being honest, it was just a hotel that I had. Um, it's like located in um, an area called downtown Chandler. So Chandler is the city, but downtown mm -hmm. Chandler. Um, and so there's a lot of food spots around there. And I think I found the hotel just by like leaving dinner one day <laughs> mm -hmm. and I've been like, oh, I really like this location. And so I usually take a photo with my iPhone and, you know, and what the iPhone will do is like, it'll, I think, I don't know if it's a setting that I picked or what, but it will like make um, a look like kind of like map where I took the photo at. So I can always refer back to it mm -hmm. if I want to look for a certain location. John is asking if the subjects are models or friends. Friends. So nobody is a model. This is actually my boyfriend. 
<laughs> and so he's um he i i use him a bit for as a subject um and so i think maybe everyone has an interest in modeling i don't know but everybody in this photo nobody's a model here they're all friends um these two they do model um these um these he models back here i think he does actually he doesn't i think these two model but he doesn't <laughs> um and so and I think that's, that's why he's in the front yeah <laughs> But I think that's another interesting part. I think um, sometimes people are like, oh, you have like really beautiful friends or like model friends. And I, I think that sometimes it just comes down to how you pose people. And I think if you can just really allow people to feel comfortable in front of the camera, anyone can show up in that way. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, again, like I mentioned yesterday, when it comes to posing, um, she's a model. But again, like, you know, can I give the, them a, can I give her any kind of direction as far as how to lean if there's a wall or if there is like a car or something that it can lean on? I always try to use that and see what kind of dimension or kind of shape I can create with the body. Um, or I'll have like come in again with like a mood board of some poses that I can refer back to. Um, and then one thing I always do throughout my shoots as well that I think it's helpful is I always show my subjects the photos so that um, when they're seeing like themselves and how good they look, that gets them excited too. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that that question. Sean says, great boyfriend. <laughs> awesome. So we're going to go ahead and start with um, our color profiles and we're going to choose what we want. So again, you can just see how if I wanted to go with, with a black and white, Try to look, I could do that. I'm just gonna go over and see. Some of these are a bit much. Oh, this is actually kind of cool. I wanna get better with black and white photos. I'm not there yet, but that's mm -hmm. a, another thing I wanna try to do. So I think I'm between neutral and faithful. Um, I'm gonna do neutral. Yeah, because Faithful introduces a lot of reds and I don't know if I want all that in that photo. So I'm gonna go with neutral. Um, and you can see that, you know, it's making the blacks a bit darker. It's keeping his skin, uh, it added a little bit of contrast there too, but didn't change his skin color, kept that really neutral. So I'm gonna go with that. And I always tend to navigate towards that um, color profile. So let's see what we can do here. And again, I even like close my presets because I told myself I'm not going to be using presets. So we are <laughs> going to just go. <laughs> yes, let's just go. From the beginning to the end. All right, let's see. So I'm pretty happy with the exposure of the image. Let's see. Oh, I want to keep that kind of dark. Let's see. Add we'll that clarity. Usually, I always add clarity like no more than like ten to my image. Let's see what I can do. Yeah, oh, the shadows. I want dark. I'm gonna bring up the dark still a little bit. And then I think I'm fine. I'm not gonna use these HSL sliders. Yeah, no. Uh, no, I don't want to see that. Well, maybe I'll bring it down a little bit. I liked how I can see the lines, how the light is hitting there. And then if I wanted to, I could do, see what I can get in these in the color grading. I think in this shot, um, when I originally shot it, I know I focused on, okay, what colors can I add to my shadows? Mm -hmm. I think when I add colors to um, my the blacks in my photos, I think that really helps to make things look more dramatic and cinematic as well. Um, and so I'm going to see, so if I want it to be more red, I could do that. I think I might even just do this in Photoshop because again, you can see how it's impacting the whole image and I don't want it to do that. So I want to be able to target a lot of the colors that I'm adding into my shadows right here, opposed to seeing it on his skin or anywhere else. So mm -hmm. I'm going to show y'all what that before and after looks. It's very slight, but you can see. It's a very slight difference, but a little bit more contrasty than before. I'm gonna send it into Photoshop. Okay. And there we are. And there we are. 
So um, I'm not going to focus on focus at all really with the frequency separation or the dodging and burning. Um, I don't think it's really necessary um, with how the lighting is hitting him for one. And then also like it's not a portrait, so I don't have to go and clean up anything or mm -hmm. do anything with the skin. So I'm going to leave that as is. Um, I'm going to go into selective color and I'm going to start off. I think his skin I like. I'm not going to change anything there. I really want to see what I can do with these blacks. So I'm going to go down to my blacks and see what we can add here. So if I wanted to remove the blues, I really like bringing in that red so we can add a little bit of that and just play around and see what we can get. Hmm. <laughs> If I wanted to make it really dark, I could too. Nah. I still want to see like the windows and everything peek mm -hmm. through. Yeah, I think it's kind of cool that you can see the reflections, mm -hmm. the ceiling, windows in the back, everything. Yeah, absolutely. I really like this like kind of red being introduced there. I think that's kind of nice, but I'm going to bring that fill and opacity down a little bit. And you can see how that kind of changes the photo a wee bit. I wanted to bring down the darkness I could, bring up the blacks I could to see what else can we do here. I'm gonna go into my, do I wanna go into the curves? I feel like I hardly ever mm -hmm. really use this tool. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But if I wanna add, which side fades more? This side, right? If I bring this up, this should fade. Got a little bit of a fade in there too, if I wanted that. Sean is asking if you would consider removing the bars coming out of your, uh, your boyfriend's head. Yeah, so that was the, I was so, I'm so sad that someone mentioned that <laughs> because that was the one thing that after I shot the image, I was like, dang it, like, <laughs> Um, sometimes I try to be mindful of like what I'm shooting against mm -hmm. because um, when you're, you know, it looks like the bar is coming out of his head, which I don't like. So I think we'll try to take it out. It's a bit tedious, so I always avoid it, but he called me out. So <laughs> <laughs> I feel inclined to. So we will do that because it does look like I love this image so much, but that's the one thing that I'm like, dang, if I had just put him like move the bar, move whatever that was, or if I had maybe placed him somewhere else so it didn't look like something was coming out of his head. That's probably what I would have done. So that question- Or maybe centered his head perfectly to that, whatever that is, so it, it, it looked yeah. like it was intentional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look at Sean calling me out. He said, you gonna, you gonna take that out or not? Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna take it out, let's see. Oh, and we might, let's see if, if I can. All right. A good friend, the clone stamp tool. Yes, it's my favorite tool to use. Makes life so much easier to just be able to come in here and take things out. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. Let's see. And I have the fan that's here, so I want to be mindful of that. Okay. Made the fan a little crooked, but hey, nobody's going to notice that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how much of this I can take out. I feel like when I'm doing stuff like this, like my face gets real close to the screen. And so I'm not even being <laughs> mindful of like <laughs> how I'm probably looking to y'all. Well, it's funny because I'm also getting in there closer trying <laughs> yeah, to see, just what trying to see <laughs> what's going on here. I'm yeah, like, I'm like, hey, what's going on? Oh my goodness. Hold on. Right here. There we go. Slowly but surely, it's yes. all getting removed. Slowly but surely. So that looks better. And then you have this, it looks like it's coming out of his ear. So mm -hmm. <laughs> we're just gonna have to remove the whole thing, I guess. 
Shout out to our clone tool for being so clutch. And shout out to your boyfriend. What's his name? <laughs> his name is MJ. MJ, nice. Yes. Th did he know that he was going to be on Adobe Live today? I, 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 <laughs> I did tell him. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I might be using one of your images. Was he like, all right, cool? Or was he like, no? <laughs> no, he, he was he was for it. He was okay, cool. It. <laughs> so let's see if I can get this. Oops, this is going to be a little tricky with this fan, but we can see what we can do. So this is this is something that I would have tried to avoid while setting up my shot. So mm -hmm. if I was paying attention more attention I could have been like you know hey let's move so this doesn't look like it's coming out of your head <laughs> and and the thing is is yes you could definitely remove it in Photoshop with enough time but now you're spending an hour of your life yes. you know where you could have spent maybe a couple minutes moving something exactly and so it's just like instead of doing that why don't I just you know move something out of the way and it saves me so much of a headache Mm -hmm. And I don't like um, cloning things, like especially some things that can get so drastic like this, because it just takes so much time. Mm -hmm. And I'm not the best at it. I'm so like, I don't want to say I'm impatient, but. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but shout out to Sean for challenging me. Yeah, because I was going to be like, we're just going to ignore that. <laughs> and of course, the, the first comment that comes in, hey, what's that on top of his head? <laughs> <laughs> of course. All right, let me come back in here. So that's, again, the cool part of the clone stamp tool. It helps you to, and I can also, let's see if the patch tool would help at all. Or if it's too, yeah. Okay, so here I go to continue with this tool. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for an easy way out. Okay, let's see, can I copy? No, I can't really do that because of the angle of the shirt. We're just gonna have to see how close we can get. We're gonna see all these pixels and everything. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have to get it perfect, but you guys get the idea. Yes. We don't have to get it perfect, but I'm going to see how much I can clean up now. Yeah, there we go. You guys get the idea of what this is doing here. We're just removing that whole plant that really wanted to try to destroy my photo. But <laughs> we, we won't said, let it. nope, we said no way, Jose. We're not doing that. No way at all. Okay. So the question in the chat is um, if you're editing non-destructively, and I, I think they're asking that question because you're not on a blank layer, but you did duplicate the background yes. layer. Yes. So that's another way of doing it. So we yes. can put a blank layer if you like, or by duplicating the background image, which mm -hmm. you can probably see from the layers panel, it reads layer one and it's a duplicate of what's below it. Yes. And that's what I always try to do because again, if I were to be like, you know what, this is too much, I can at least delete the layer and start and make another duplicate and start all over. Mm -hmm. And say, you know what, we're, we're just gonna leave that plant coming out of his head or that bar. Bingo. Okay, there's something out of his like ear. You the light a little bit, right? Yes, I think so. Let's see. And then there's also this fan that I've now destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how much can I copy? No, I can't. So let's just see how what I can do here. Oh, we're just gonna have to leave that as is. Yeah. There we go. But it looks that, fantastic. That looks, there we go. So there is that before. Oh, I did get a little bit of the light there. What did I, what happened here? You probably accidentally clicked on it or something. Yeah, I did. It's fine. I'm just gonna erase that. There we go. And. Fantastic. Fantastic. Much better. Look at that. That looks so much better. Oh, <laughs> see, <laughs> sometimes the pain points that you have, you know, I'm like, oh, that was going to take too much time, but at least I did it. And then it makes the image look so much cleaner and so much better. Definitely. 
do, do, do. Let's see, what else do I want to do here? I think for the most part, this image is fine. I don't want to add anything else to it. So this was one of the quicker ones. I think that I liked the lighting situation, how it was shot originally already. Um, so I didn't have to do too much in post outside of his, of everything that was coming out of his head. So I'm going to save that. And we're going to go back into Lightroom. We can see that before and after. But yeah, that's why I think um, just challenging yourself with playing with lighting um, is really, really cool. And sometimes we don't realize like, you know, even like the sun, like, you know, if it's, if it's, I used to be afraid of shooting in darker, like when, when there's like a lot of shadows and things of that nature. Cause I'm like, oh no, like what if there's a shadow on the face or what if there's like something of that sort in the image that might be distracting. I think that it really can add a lot to your image and add a lot of dimension as well. So mm -hmm. I really like how this is really dark around here, really makes it moody cinematic as well. Um, I like that we were able to add some color in there to just make it more interesting than just being black. And I like how it just kind of frames our subject. And I think you can even see me right here with my camera. Oh, there you are. <laughs> and so I shot this at a lower length angle as well. That's like just what I always kind of do. I like to make my subjects um, I like shooting at a lower link, lower angle, excuse me, so I can get a lot of that um, mm -hmm. wideness around them and make them appear to be as tall as they can in that space as well. Beautiful. Looks great. Looks great. So I think next we can go to this image. Yeah. Something and by the way, um, uh, let me see who has that question. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, don't guess I'm, he was a person asking about the portrait and he, what he said now is sorry better question if you have a slide of vertical portraits on Instagram how would you showcase that horizontal picture in that slide oh okay um that is a very good question I don't even remember when I originally had posted this image if I had done it if I even included it in it because I usually have a lot of vertical images and um, when I'm posting on Instagram, I hardly ever post something horizontal. And so if I was posting this image, I probably would have posted this on its own mm -hmm. or I would have um, included it with other images that were shot in the same, within the same kind of, um, in the, the same kind of horizontal way. Um, just because I don't like, especially on Instagram, Instagram can be really annoying because <laughs> I don't like how things are vertical. And if you want like an image like this to, if you want to show the full image, you have to add like a white mm -hmm. space around your image and stuff like that. I don't like how it presents my photos. So if I were to post like a set of vertical images and I came across this, I probably wouldn't add it in that set. I would probably make a separate post or it would just be something that's sitting on my website. <laughs> cool. All right. So this photo, I'm going to come into our profile settings. I think I like standard for this one. Let's do standard. Nice. And the artist spotlight countdown is on screen. So we'll be doing that in about 21 minutes. Beautiful. I'm excited to see who our artist spotlight is. Yeah. Can't wait to see. Yeah, let's do standard. Close that. And so let's see, we're going to go off of vibes and see what we might want for this image today. Let's see. Bring up my clarity. Move down here. Again, I just really like how a lot of it is just me playing around with the sliders and be like, okay, does this look appealing to my eye? Yes or no? Okay. I think I'm going to keep. Oh, I like that. 
Of course, I like the teal. We're not going to do that mm -hmm. too much of it. <laughs> I'm like always navigating back to it. Yeah. And I'm like, I feel like every time I navigate towards that color, I'm like, oh, I really like that. Yeah, of course you do, Idara. You love teal. <laughs> of course you do. I kind of want to make that more saturated so it pops a bit more. So, yeah, I like how that's popping out more. I'm going to leave the skin as is for now. Let's see what we can add here, tone-wise. Okay, so I really like that. Throwing those oranges into our highlights. I'm gonna leave that there. Let's see what we can do to our shadows. I still want, there we go. I like that a lot, this, the oranges. Let's see, somewhere in this red orange color. Maybe there, and then nice let's see what we can do to our <laughs> do here as well to our highlights. I really do so much with this tool. Let's see. I think that's a good starting point for now. I really like the tone so far. And so we're gonna go ahead and head into Photoshop. And there we go. Let's see what we can do here. So I'm gonna come in and do a little bit of frequency separation just to take care of some small spots. And did Nothing you tell me. us yesterday where you got the, the action or is that something you made? Oh, I did not tell you guys. I think I got it from maybe like YouTube. I think I was watching, um, I think it might've been uh, Jessica Cabasi or another photographer that mm -hmm. um, I was watching videos on frequency separations and they were like, oh, I have an action in my description box. Mm -hmm. um, and so nice. I think that might've been the case of what I did um, mm -hmm. for this image, um, for these actions. Um, I think I tried to, I've never really created an action before. I think mm -hmm. I've maybe once, but these ones were um, just downloaded. So I think you can find actions to download. Um, a lot of photographers have them for free um, mm -hmm. just because they're so simple. So you can find them to download and put into your image or put into Photoshop for your images. Mm -hmm. And what are you looking to remove in, on, on her face in particular? There was like a little spot over here that I wanted to take out. It was very small, but okay. I took that out. And then that's really all I wanted to take. I think everything else is pretty fine. Mm -hmm. Again, wanting to keep things as natural as possible. I am going to go and do some dodging and burning. I'll bring this up here. I'm gonna move this back to my brush tool, bring the opacity down to 10 maybe, and then increase the size of my brush. I'm just gonna come in here. And again, just like I said before, when I do my makeup, I just kind of follow along where I really wanna add a little bit more of mm -hmm. a pop to the face. and make those features pop out a bit more. Let's go about out a little bit so you can see that did a little bit there. I'm not gonna really worry about everyone else, but I want my main subject to be let's see. Okay, I'm gonna come in here, add a little bit dimension into the face as well. I might Reduce that opacity a little bit. I don't want it mm -hmm. too dark there. Yes. She's looking good. She's mm -hmm. looking great. <laughs> I'm going to add some, a little bit of highlight to her locks as well. I think that'll be really nice. Yeah. It's crazy because as you're doing it, you really don't see it. And then you do the before and after and mm -hmm. it's like night and day. Exactly. It's like kind of interesting where I'm like, I'm just running, like just making all of these small little edits and I'm like, I don't really see much of anything now. And then you do this and it's like, oh, 
Okay. <laughs> so you guys can see there already how that already makes her pop out a little bit more and adds more dimension and really brings focus to um, certain features. I think it's really cool, like, especially like eyes, like I want their eyes to pop out. Um, sometimes what another thing that I would do is when I make this frequency separation layer, um, the texture layer, I would, if I copy it, you can see that it makes it really um, sharp. I can add a mask, invert it. And then if I want it to make certain portions of my image sharper, I could do this. So I tend to do this for like eyes. Sometimes um, I do it for jewelry for sure. If there's like, so in the case that there was the rings, the necklace, if I wanted to make something more sharp and kind of target it, I could also, I use this layer to do so. And then I just kind of come in and I can erase where I want the mask to show through. really slight and so i'm not sure how much of you guys can see the difference i can see a little bit but not too much but sometimes i'll do that so we've got that and that so far so i really like where we are currently standing with our image and then now we're going to come in and do play with some colors a bit i think her skin for the most part is fine but i am going to see what we can don't want to make her too and let's see what we can do here. Yeah, that's nice. No, I don't want her yellow. And sometimes my eyes will get tired. Like if I feel like I am editing so much or looking at a photo like 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 too much in detail, I'll have to like walk away and be like, okay, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna come back to this. Do you ever use the uh, view horizontal um, feature? No. Oh, if you go under the view menu, there is uh, something called where is it? Uh, flip horizontal, and it just like it's not oh, this, it's wow. not distorting the photo. It's just showing it to you inverted, mm -hmm. so you can kind of get a fresh, fresh, a fresh, look. a fresh look at it. Oh, that's but if nice. You, if you were to save the file and close it when you open it again, it's, it's back to normal. Oh, so this okay. Is, this is just a, a, a view, you know, just like imagine like putting a mirror on something so you can mm -hmm. see, okay, cool, that's what it, and then you can flip it back. And that's something that like, you know, a lot of times, you know, you should get up, mm -hmm. you know, look, step away. And then when you come back, you might see something. But if you're like in a time crunch, like, oh my God, I got half an hour to finish. Mm -hmm. This could be like a good method to just see yeah. it in a in a new way. A lot of times when you see something and you know in, in the reverse you, you'll mm -hmm. your eye will be like oh my god i didn't notice you know mm -hmm. the light or something that is a, a tip that i'm definitely going to take because there are times where i feel like i need to there are times where i may have like procrastinated and i'm mm -hmm. like in a time crunch yeah um, but when i'm editing multiple photos it can just be really exhausting to the eye and i feel like there's things that i'm missing so mm -hmm. i always try to make sure that i have time to walk away but even just flipping this over just gives you a whole new perspective and kind of like resets your eyes. So I like mm -hmm. that a lot. Yeah. Thank you. And the back for right now. So yeah, so skin is cool. And we're gonna really, again, the focus of this photo um, color wise is what can I do with this, the blue? Mm -hmm. It'll impact their shirts, but I'm not worried too much about that. Um, and then adding colors into the highlights like we did previously in Photoshop. So I usually just, I'm just gonna make my way down to my science and see what I can do there. Going towards my teal. I always love to add, I always love to add, I feel like I always navigate towards adding yellow into my blues, increasing the science, adding yellows, and then removing any kind of like magenta to add, to make it more, you know, adding more of that blue in there. And you can just see how that just, I don't know, I feel like it makes the image pop mm -hmm. out a bit more. <clears throat> and then I can do the same thing. If I go down to white and I'm focusing on all the highlights and even like it'll impact all this up here too. I can go ahead and if I wanted to add more blues into that, I could, but I want there to be a, a distinctive separation. I don't want to move it over here to blues and it's looking like this is all kind of connecting. I want there to be a distinctive separation between the two colors. Mm. And 
Yeah, I like adding that yellow in there a little bit. Yeah, that I mean, there's nice. definitely a lot of depth in this image with the uh, fabric coming on across mm -hmm. and then the shallow depth of field, the blue, mm -hmm. all that's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And I just think that that's, those are things that you can do <clears throat> um, while you're shooting that can just create a whole new perspective and just make a, a image not feel flat. Um, and so fabrics is probably one of the things when I started to introduce fabrics into my shoots, um, especially creative projects, I always can find a way to justify it if I want to. Sometimes it just it looks cool. And I just like it yeah. um, because it just it's flowy. It feels free. Um, and I feel like it just looks really, really nice in that sense. Let's see. I do think I'm going to come in. See what I can do with adding a solid color and adding, I want it to be a little bit warmer. So I'm gonna come down here and let's see what we've got here. I wanna go to, yeah, I like that a lot. So I just went to, I added the solid color and then I added, went to luminosity just to make it a little softer make them a little bit softer there too. You can see that before and after, mm -hmm. like there was a lot of contrast there and I wanted to make it softer. And let me go ahead and pull these together and see what this is looking like. Yeah, boy, that's looking nice. <laughs> um, let's see, what else do I wanna do? Let's see. I want to do anything else to my science. I think I'm pretty happy with the color of them. I don't think I want to make them any. Oh, that's fine. That's not too much. Yeah, it is too much. That's. <laughs> but does that even make a difference? Yeah, it doesn't. So we're just going to, we don't need unnecessary layers. And bring that down and I really like this I don't know if there's anything else I want to do you guys can see this is the photo we came into with from Lightroom cleaning up that adding that um, dodging and burning just to bring out her face a bit more mm -hmm. and then a little bit of a color grade there, not too much. I think that we were able to, I think the same kind of focus I had in Lightroom was again, what can I, the blues and then adding the highlights, I was a big um, impact with the tones too. Mm -hmm. And then I do like adding this color fill just to make it um, a little bit softer as well, not to feel as, 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 as um, contrasty as well. So, Let's see what this before and after looks like. So we're going to send it. Oh, you don't want to save there? No problem. What's going on? Let's save somewhere else. Oh, I see why. Okay, we're going to save you there. The hard drive that I originally used. I shot this photo maybe two years ago, and that hard drive is full, full. <laughs> at its capacity. So we're gonna save that and send that back in. And we'll be doing the artist spotlight in about seven minutes. Yay. Oh, time has been flying. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, perfect. So. I click on here. No, I'm going to reset this and click here. One and two. So there is our before and after of this image. Um, I really love, I don't know, I just, there's something about the staggering that just gives me chills. I really like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, the dimension with the fabrics, I think that if you can play around with whether it's fabrics or um, really anything that can just add, add a like unique perspective to your image. I think it's really, really nice. I really love to, a lot of the times I'll take the fabric and like I mentioned before, put it around my lens um, to see what kind of effect that'll do. 
Um, and I just really like the color. I mean, in this case, with the whole theme of the project, I really liked in the color, us utilizing the color blue and making that pop because there's a sense of calmness and it mm -hmm. just feels relaxing um, and welcoming and safe. And so that was what I really wanted to make sure was that you felt in the image because I think oftentimes with black women specifically, um, and as being one, I think oftentimes we're seeing as being strong. There's this, there's the, the stereotype of, you know, black women are strong, they're, they're rough, they're this, they're difficult. And so with this project specifically, I wanted to really combat all of those stereotypes and show that we are soft, we can be vulnerable. We don't want to be, I don't want to be strong all the time. I don't want that narrative. Um, and so I really like how you can introduce colors that will allow you to feel those emotions that you might be you know the idea that you might have for a project how can you use colors to really bring that forth in your image or how can you um, really pose your subjects as well to let them you know to show that support or whatever that theme is that you're trying to show so this entire photo set was probably I mean I say everything's my favorite but everything's <laughs> my favorite in its own way <laughs> for a reason they're all your babies they're all my babies they're all my babies and um, it's kind of cool where where you can kind of challenge yourself with having a, an idea and seeing okay how can I bring this to life mm -hmm. um you know, with the way I pose and elements that I include in my photo, but definitely with the color grading as well. Viola said, tell it, Idara. <laughs> Listen, I went a little mini rant there, but it just, it means so much to me. And that's the great thing about art is that you can share whatever, like this is a narrative that's so dear to my heart because it's my experience. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to be able to say, okay, this is how I feel. I don't want to be the strong black woman. I don't want to do it. <laughs> I want to be soft. I want to ask for help. I want to be vulnerable. I want people to make space for me and my emotions. And so being able to take that feeling that I have and showcase it in my art, I think is really, really powerful. Um, and really, really being able to use these tools to kind of enhance your photos and bring that that idea to life is really important to me as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed the image and the editing there. Yeah, and then you can see the before and after. Fantastic. Yes, we've and done. I like how there. you know, like you you talked talking about it yesterday. Your your style is you know warm skin tones and all mm -hmm. of that stuff, and you can clearly see. Not to say that the left one looks cold, but mm -hmm. you can definitely feel the warmth on the right one. Mm -hmm. And it just makes everything feel like more inviting and cozy, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so, and I don't know what it is about when I'm editing and, and, and looking at this image, I just feel like I'm there, I'm in that moment. Um, mm -hmm. When things, so like, when things are more on like the warmer tone sides, I feel like it's more inviting. Um, and I feel like I can, I just feel more so within the space and in the image, opposed to feeling like the image is something separate um, from me, so um yeah awesome so we got about two minutes to do the artist spotlight so I'm... beautiful let's keep going so i can start something else and we can move into i think i'm gonna do this photo nice so let's see there all right We have gone through quite, can y'all see all the photos we did? <laughs> quite a bit. Quite a bit, quite a bit. Let's see. Here we, here we are with our good friends, the profiles. Yep, our good friends, the profiles, a nice little starting point. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes again, like, I don't know, Faithful is usually my favorite one. Um, it does add a lot of like reds in the skin. So that's something I always have to come back and like mm -hmm. fix, but I do like how contrasty the image is sometimes. So I usually, I think I'm gonna start with neutral. I always navigate towards, go back and forth between the two. Make this a little, not too warm. Uh, I'm gonna keep that maybe there for now. And this was from, a project I, oh wow what is this oh no that's something else um this was from a project that i called i think it was um, called legacy and it was inspired by the movie queen and slim and i can't mm -hmm. remember i think i had like the project description on my website so i don't remember what the whole i think it was something along the lines of support and love and something of that sort and creating a legacy with somebody but um, I remember watching the movie Queen and Slim and being like, oh, I want to create 
a photo, like a photo set, a, a project out of this and inspiration can really come from anywhere. We got about uh, 30 seconds to do the artist spotlight. Perfect. We'll be doing that shortly. We are so close. I'm excited to see today's artist. Yes, me too. I really like the artist spotlights because it's just like you get to see how creative everybody is and the kind of art that they have and mm -hmm. everyone is so talented and do like they like whether it's like photographers that just have a diff completely different style or maybe they do a lot of photo compositing or whatever the case might be it's just it's really really cool to see what people come up with definitely See, this is me. I don't want teal. I don't want it. Mm, maybe a little bit. <laughs> maybe just a wee bit. <laughs> just a tiny little bit. Just a tiny bit. <laughs> awesome. So I'm ready to pull up that artist spotlight yeah. as soon yeah, as we can. Yeah, we're ready to go. Ready to go? Ready to go. Here we go. Who is it today? Let's see. So we have Will. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. If I'm not, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but yeah. he is a uh, graphic designer. Mm -hmm. I'm a Sudanese graphic designer based in Saudi Arabia. Um, says most of his designs are inspired by the natural life of Sudanese people and their culture, also aimed at highlighting art and society in an in innovative and creative way. Wow. I love the colors he uses. You can tell uh, it's, 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 you know, yellow and green are his at least from the ones we're looking mm -hmm. at. Yeah, even right here, you can see the yellow and the greens are very, this portrait is beautiful. This image is very, very beautiful. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you can see that yellow and green. Oh, wow, this is cool. When people do this kind of photo compositing, it's just like, how? Like, <laughs> what gave you the idea for one um and then and yeah. i'm sorry what are, what is the title for this do you mind scrolling up let's see it's oh. there we go the prisoner and the war oh wow getting out of the mental prisons in the street put ourselves is not an easy thing as long as we are the prisoner and the wow wow i wonder I if this is this is him no i don't i don't know if this is him or not but mm -hmm. very this interesting is, this is Beautiful, and I love the teardrop here as well. Mm -hmm. And some more images that we have here. Because these are beautiful. Ooh, what's a, this? A, I'm guessing a, a video, a breakdown video, probably. Yeah, let me see. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah breakdown break video. video. <laughs> I'm gonna turn off the volume there. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Oh, that's cool. Wow. Oh, so he added the teardrop. Yeah. No, there was Which I a, guess makes sense, yeah. A oh, stock the, photo there on the right on the here. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, it's fantastic work indeed. That is beautiful work. Oh, really, wow. really great. I want a print of that. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Let's see. He definitely knows how to use his colors well. I mean, mm -hmm. he, there's that uh, astronaut. I like the, you know, kind of like in your work a little bit, blue and, and the orange or, you know. Yeah. Wow, this is beautiful. I wonder if he has a breakdown of this image as well. Wow. Yeah, there you go. I really like these breakdowns because it, mm -hmm. it allows you to see kind of that process mm -hmm. from beginning to end. So I love how he took these images and just, <laughs> he took literally three different images and brought it together in one. That's really dope. Really, really cool. And he had to go for the teal. I know. <laughs> he had to go for the teal. Oh, this is cool. I love how he's using his Behance to just show all of these projects, showcases them very, very well. Um, across the spectrum. 
the color in this image is beautiful. It really, really is. Mm -hmm. oh, these are stunning. What else do we have here? It's a lot of great work, a lot of good compositing. I'm, I'm guessing he's also doing some photography, so it's mm -hmm. fantastic. Oh, and it looks like he has a website linked in his, oh, can't, I wonder oh, if. Geez. Oh, let's update that. I wanted to see his website. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you have your website updated on Behance. Yes. And this is what you guys should be doing too, putting up your work on Behance. Mm -hmm. if, you have, if you don't have a Behance account, I highly suggest you get one now, okay. behance.net. And it's it's free. You can show off your work. And I like the way that you can show off your work in Behance as well. I need to do more of sharing my work mm -hmm. too. But this is just the, the layout of everything. It's really, really nicely done. Mm -hmm. And I like how each project can just look really unique in its own way too. That's really cool. This is the image I saw actually yesterday. And thinking is talking of the soul within with itself. Wow. Again, going from like having an idea, like how do you even start with with being like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. And I, I really not only I mean clearly his work fantastic, but as, as you were saying, the the way that it's displayed on Behance is, mm -hmm. is really really great. Yeah, absolutely. And I think these animations I, I, is something that I think is really, really cool and inviting. It just kind of shows how much you really can do. Mm -hmm. um, and just the talent he has to take these images and create all of these different concepts. Wait, so did he Photoshop like another eye in there? It Wait, just... I didn't even see that. Hold on, let me see. Look, her eye is closed, but then the original photo, her eye is open. See? Oh. So my, Oh my God. <laughs> Wow, now that's talent. How? It's probably two photos because that looks yeah. way too good too. It looks, it looks <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I didn't even catch that there. Yeah, absolutely stunning work. Oh. What's this one called? Her is made of poetry roses and galaxies. And I really like how he shows his work um, mm -hmm. in different settings too, like with the print, like on the wall. I think he had mm -hmm. one that was like a gallery. I yeah. think the last one was like on a CD cover. Um, I think that really, as far as like, as a, I'm assuming as a graphic design, just being able to show how your work can look in different settings as a, as a creative mm -hmm. in general, I think that's important. No, this is really cool. So we need to get him on a live. I need to watch him do a, a step by step. If he's not, if, I need to see if he already has one. <laughs> um, because these are, this is incredible work. Really, really good work. Hey, I guess there's our artist spotlight. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> uh, well, El Sanosi, sorry if we mispronounced your name, but fantastic yes. work. Everybody, check him out. Um, uh, Sam posted, I believe, the link in the description or in the chat. So make sure that you check them out and give them a follow. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So we got about um, 20 minutes, Idara. What do you want to show in those next 20 minutes? Continue with this photo? Let's continue with this photo. It's the last um, of what I had for today. And if you all have any questions, let me know. I think I kind of, my workflow as far as what I've showed you guys so far, that's generally what I do. I just kind of start off in Lightroom and see what I, where I can get the photo to. Um, and then I really just play around in Photoshop. And sometimes I'll just, sometimes I go with an idea like, okay, I know I'm gonna use these adjustment layers. And sometimes I just play around and see what adjustment layers and what they'll do to my photo as well. We've got the sky in here. I do want to, no, this is blue. No, I wanna keep it kind of rich as well. We're going to come down here and see what we can do. Not too much. 
make it around the world and see where we're gonna <laughs> land. <laughs> you might get a happy little accident. Yeah. <laughs> You might, you just might. And again, when, this is my favorite tool in just so much freedom. Like you can just literally just see like that tone there and come down. Let's see, yeah, I like that so far. Do I want to add anything to my mid? Ooh. Wow, okay, hold on, we might we might be on to something. Okay. Kind of like that. Kata Jones is saying these photos are gorgeous. Oh, thank you. If I wanted to copy and paste that over, I could. So at least that's a starting point for this other image as well. And I so could. there's a question in the chat that I, I think I'm gonna just reword a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um are there any, do you have any tips or anything in specific uh, when you uh, are making images that are going to go to mobile devices, either anything to uh, increase or decrease brightness or whites or anything like that? Mm. So a lot of the times, especially things that are going to, that's the one thing that I don't feel like I've mastered well mm -hmm. enough. I feel like, especially when the images are going into Photoshop, because um, I think the screen is, is calibrated, but still sometimes when I set, when I export an image and I set it to my phone, it just appears a little bit differently and like certain colors might be off or like the highlights or whatever. So I, I do have some apps on my phone to just make some slight adjustments to get it back to um, whatever the original photo was meant to look like. Um, and so those apps include things like Snapseed. I use Visco a lot of the times. Um, and so those are probably my two main apps that I use when doing that. The next thing is like when I am uploading into fate, uploading into Instagram to be specific, I do have my settings in the app to make sure, especially I always like my photos to look really crisp and sharp. And when you're exporting and putting things, uploading them onto the app, I do find that sometimes, um, I do find that sometimes the quality can go down. And so I do, there's a certain setting in your Instagram. I can't remember where it is in settings, but there is a setting for uploading high quality images. And then I always go in and I add more sharpness just so that it also is coming across sharp and crisp on, on social mm -hmm. media app, um, apps as well. Awesome. Thanks for that. Yes. But if you, if y'all got any tips for exporting, cause that's the, the, that's the difficult part is making sure your art looks the same. Yeah, let, let us know if you have any tips in the chat. Yes. I'm sorry if you guys are hearing any kind of noise. I don't know if you guys can hear that. We're getting blinds in the house today. <laughs> oh. So there are, I think somebody might have just stopped by. Let's see. So I think I'm pretty happy with this photo thus far. And again, post this over here so we can have a solid foundation and we're going to send this over into photoshop our favorite spot let's see and let's see what we'll do here i'm going to go in and do a slight let's see let's see so we're going to copy that over See, do you want your eyes to be? I'm gonna scroll in a little bit and put this. This is to be on black layer mask. Come in a wee bit. Oh, I really hope you guys can't hear all that. <laughs> that whole cover. Can you hear it? <laughs> I don't know. Let it, I can hear just yeah. a tiny little tiny bit. bit. Okay, tiny little bit. Good thing we are towards the end of our live today and that wasn't any, any time earlier. All right, so I made my skin copy. I am gonna go in and bring this over. Yeah, we got about 13 minutes just to give you 
a heads up that way you can plan in your head what you want to show yes so we are just going to clean up a little bit And I'm going to come in here and and right there now you're go. using uh, what tool? So I'm using, I use the mixture brush tool mm -hmm. whenever I am doing kind of like that um, painting that we mentioned last yesterday. And then I use the patch tool whenever I want to kind of copy and paste like a certain part of the skin somewhere else. So mm -hmm. For the example, like if she has this small smart here, I can mm -hmm. turn this and kind of pull, pull um, make a little circle around it. And then I can drag it over to another part of her face that I want to copy over. Right. Um, so that's the, those are the two tools that I use when I'm doing my um, frequency separation. I think there's like a number of different ways. I don't even know if this is technically the right way of you doing it. This is the way that I learned. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I like to go about it. So I think that is fine just because we're, yeah. So just a slight change there. I'm gonna pull this back a little bit. We are gonna do a little bit of dodging and burning. <clears throat> Actually, I'm going to skip that and we're just going to go into the colors and see what we can do with tones here. Sounds Since we're, good. Um, skin is cool. I'll do the science. I do want that to pop. I think another thing that I might do with this image, I think I did in the, in the original one, I did add some grain. Mm -hmm. um, and so if we can get to that time, that spot, I'll try to add some grain. See, show y'all how I do that as well. Let's see. I'm going to add some into the blacks mm -hmm. just to, uh, and bring the opacity down a wee bit. <clears throat> Not too much there, but just a wee bit. Like adding. Let's see. And I'm gonna bring this down a bit more as well. As you're working through these images, do you have a, a final look in mind or are you just playing around to see what, what pops up? Yeah, I, I just play around. Um, I don't really um, kind of stress about having a certain look or doing things in a certain kind of way. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes, very rarely I do, but I just kind of like mess around. I'm like, oh, I like that. And then I just kind of copy it for the rest of the, of the photo set. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of just let to let each photo, when I sit down, just kind of let myself feel free to edit in whatever way that I might be feeling in that mm -hmm. moment. So you can see there that I do that sometimes if like, and if there's a lot of blacks in the photos, I am always gonna come in here to select the color and add blacks into my images mm -hmm. in, in whatever way that I can. No, I don't like, I don't do much with neutrals. Sometimes I try to play around with them, but they don't always come out the way that I would like. Bring this down a wee bit. Okay. I'm gonna come in to select color again and see I don't want her looking too. Do you remember how you discover uh, selective color? How did I discover? I think it was another photographer. Um, and so we were, um, I had kind of felt like I hit a wall of my editing. And so I just reached out to him. I was like, hey, like, cause his photo work, it was, was absolutely phenomenal. Um, and so I remember just reaching out to him and just being like, hey, like, you know, is there anything, I'm new to Photoshop. Is there any tips that you have for um, color editing? And he immediately was like, um, selective color. That is a huge <laughs> game changer for his workflow. And I was like, why? And so he kind of watched me through selective color. And then I watched, went straight to YouTube to watch as many videos as I could as mm -hmm. well. So I could kind of learn more about selective color and like what it means and what I can do with it. And that's kind of how I fell into this rabbit hole of, of this tool. It's my yeah. favorite thing in this app. 
um, again, because you can just kind of target those colors, change the colors within the color. <laughs> it's just so much freedom there. Um, and so I really love this edit so far. I'm gonna come in here and I'm, I am gonna see if I can clone out these small pieces of her hair. I don't really like this little ball that's sitting here. I want to kind of make yeah. it a little- Kind of seem like they were floating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it definitely did. And I still want, okay, I think that is fine. I don't want to do too much there, but just enough. And so if we go ahead and look at this, you can see the slightly difference. I mean, with her skin, I think I'm going to come in here. I have a couple minutes where I can <laughs> add that dodging and burning there. Oh, did I already have that group there? I did. So let me delete this group. And come here to dodge. Brush tool, white background. And we're just gonna come in. Oh, I'm on the burn. That's not what I want. I want to dodge. <laughs> so just come in here a wee bit. Same thing, I like how the sun hit him right here and up here on his forehead. A little bit on this nose right there. I'm gonna come over here and add a little bit more, make his face a little chisel, just a wee bit with the cheekbones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll come back here and highlight that part of his neck. And around it a bit and yeah i like that so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna save this and we're gonna send it back into lightroom where i can go ahead and put in a little bit i i do want to add some grain to this image so we're gonna do that too so let's wait for that to pop up beautiful and then i'm gonna come down here Sometimes when I'm getting my images for Rexport, I do add a little bit of sharpness, um, a little bit of luminance just to make sure it's soft. And then grain is right down here. And then so I can add some grain. <clears throat> I did like the kind of, um, I, sometimes I like to add grain to my photos. I don't know what it does. It just has that like old vintage type of look to it. It makes it feel less digital to me. I feel like mm -hmm. in, in digital photography, things can be really smooth sometimes, mm -hmm. especially after you're adding filters and you know who knows what else. So by adding a little bit of grain, I feel that it just makes it feel more more tangible, more yes. more like film, as you said. Yes, absolutely. And so you can just see how much like you can see all that. And I love to if I'm adding grain, I'm committing to adding the grain. Yeah. So you can see the grain in her skin. Um, and again, I just, it's just another level of, of a leather layer of texture that it adds mm -hmm. that just elevates your photos a bit more. So we have the last before and after you guys. Yeah. And just That's in time, before. we have about four more minutes. Beautiful. So that is that. our before and after. And we ended up with the teal again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you that the teal, um, kind of again with the the color the complex skin complexions and adding teal i just i love how the two complement each other i just feel like compared to like her skin and then blue was just like oh that's cool that's nice but then mm -hmm. the teal is very mm -hmm. again I, there's something about that color um relationship there that feels very cinematic to me yeah um I was I was wondering how you're gonna add teal to the photo of your boyfriend. I was like, that's gonna be a, an interesting <laughs> yeah. <thing."> no, <laughs> I couldn't do that there. <laughs> but if I have, best believe, if I have blue in a photo or if I have the sky, I'm definitely changing the color of the sky to you know being more teal or whatever I can do there. Nice. If I wanted to, maybe I would have added some. No, I think I would have left this as as is. Mm -hmm. I like the sky as it is. I love the grain. Um, I wonder what the original photo, I have the original photo on my website, so I'm going to probably go back and look at what, how I edited it at that, at that time and how it looks now. now. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy so, with all the results we've had. Talking about your website, why don't you uh, let people know where we can find you? Yes. We have a couple of minutes so we can spend them uh, checking out your website, your Instagram. Yes, 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 yes. So if you guys 
uh, want to check me out, you can head over to my website. It is edaraekpo.com. And so you'll be able to find a lot of my work here. You also have the link to my Instagram, which is, oh yeah, it's ID, O-H-Y-E-A-H-I-T-S-I-D-Y. Um, you can also check out some different projects I have. We did talk a little bit about Self-Portrait Sunday. Somebody mm -hmm. had some questions about that yesterday. Um, these are all self-portraits that I've taken. I took these all in my bedroom <laughs> um, during over the course of the quarantine, over the course of the pandemic. And um, you'll see the project in Ode to Black Women. So these are the images from that set that we um, went through. And this is the image that we actually edited today. Um, same thing with Brother, that's chilling here as well. So you guys, and each, these videos, so Brother and Ode to Black Women Dreams are my kind of my babies in the sense that they also are accompanying, uh, they have videos that go along with the, the photo sets as well. So you can kind of see the full concept of the, of the photo project come to life. Awesome. Well, fantastic work. Thank you so much, Adara, for um, showing us your tips and tricks on how to create cinematic photos in Lightroom and Photoshop. It's been fantastic. Absolutely. Thank y'all for having me again. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. And thank everybody in the chat for being here for the awesome questions, for all the love and support. Make sure that you check out Adara and make sure that you stick around for the next Adobe live stream, which is with Julia Baca. And she's going to be showing how to do um, social media posts in Adobe Lightroom. Um, not Lightroom. Oh my God. <laughs> Adobe Illustrator. <laughs> excuse me. Wow. <laughs> Adobe Illustrator. She's going to be doing the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge up next. So make sure that you stick around for that. Awesome. Awesome, Adara. It was a pleasure meeting you and hanging out with you for the last couple of days. Yes. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Likewise. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us and stick around for Julia Baca for the Adobe Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.